half of the success of the production is in the casting of the characters. There's too much photography that is shot purely based on is anyone available to shoot with me. It's great. That's a great learning platform. But if you pay more attention to casting your characters, you will have much more successful shoot times. And that's part of your job as the director of your photo shoot. And that's where it all starts. One of the key elements in directing is to be the person's friend. Whoever you photographing, you need to establish a relationship. There's a relationship between the camera and the person being photographed. And this is something that I find especially novice photographers might struggle with this. You might not have enough of an outgoing personality to be able to just meet someone and say, hey, how are you doing? How was your day? How, how was your ride on the way into the shoot? What are you doing later on today? Are you in a rush today? Is there shit going on in your life? Has your boyfriend just dumped you? You've got to go and dig a little bit, become friends, because you are their safety net. When someone's in front of the camera, you are the person that is making them look and feel good. So have a great rapport with anyone that you're working with. Whether you like them or not, for that space in time, you are their best friend. I speak under correction, but I think it was Annie Leibovitz maybe that, that said, um, I fall in love a little bit for a few minutes with every person that I shoot. And that is so critical. You have to do that. You have to look at someone and you have to find something that you really enjoy about this person and work on it. Even if you're faking it, it doesn't matter. Just fake it properly, but be their best friend for that time on set and be professional. Always be professional. So here today we've got two characters, Liz and Dion. The one's a nut bar, the other one's a fruit and nut bar. The two of them together, an insane amount of fun. Great characters that have great energy together in a shot. So that's the first part of your directing, choosing the right people to work with. Don't bounce around changing your team all of the time. Find someone that you trust and whose personality you enjoy, who you know brings out and sets the tone for your shoot of the day. Very important. The makeup artist that I very often use, Maureen, she's a great asset to me as a director of a photo shoot. And that is a point that photographers don't realize. When you're on set, the first and the longest relationship that is built on a set is between your model and your makeup artist. They sit there for an hour to two hours and they talk shit about boyfriends, relationships, heartaches, heartbreaks, money, needs and desires for the shoot on the day, what they are prepared to do, what they're not prepared to do, what they're scared of, what they're not scared of. If it's someone you don't know, have a discussion with them before the time and tell them how to set the tone for the day. You don't want a makeup artist who's talking to your model about her dog that died last week. Enough said about that. My style of directing on a photo shoot, I have very strong ideas. You don't know what you're doing unless you've prepped for your shoot. Photographers, myself included, tend to be quite lazy people. We have this lovely little box and all you do is you press a button and you get a picture. So the more work you do before a shoot, the better your shoot will run. The more concise your idea will be in your head of what you're trying to get out of these people. Generally, there isn't an allowance for a production manager. So as a director, most of the time you need to fulfill this role. Keep everyone informed on the progress of the day. It's not going to serve your shoot to get yourself lost in catching a picture and not realizing that you've only left your hairstylist and makeup artist 15 minutes to change your look because you still need a, another hour of shoot time. So you have to time your shots. You need to know when to let something go and to move on to your next idea and your results are gonna get better and better. So with today's specific shoot in mind, I 
had an idea of these two dramatic and powerful characters and I love building ambiguity into my shots. When there's no ambiguity in a shot then you are simply served an image on a platter and you don't tend to look at the image, interpret the image, wonder about the image. You don't spend time reading the image with your eye when everything's just served to you on a platter. So the ambiguity in, in this story it comes from this powerful couple. We don't know if they're family and we don't know if they're lovers. But what we do know is that there's this beautiful sisterhood that exists between these two people. So in terms of directing, before we start shooting, I'm going to sit everyone down and I will clearly explain to everybody what I expect to happen during the day. I will run through my story that's in my head and I will also run through a brief shot list of where I would like the story to begin and where I would like the story to go to, a beginning, a middle and an end. It's the basic building blocks of a story and if you can build that into an editorial shoot and make everyone aware of where you're going to within the shoot, you already another 10% towards having a successful shoot. One of the last things that I'll do in my prep before the time is I will discuss the wardrobe choices with the models also. Now obviously I've done this in my casting before. The intent is never nudity in, in the shoot, but I'm not going to choose someone who is incredibly sensitive towards nudity to work in a shoot where I know that the wardrobe might be a little bit see-through. Say to them, okay, in the run of the shoot, we are going to have a jacket that's open in that shot. We are going to have a dress that's a little bit see-through in that shot. Have everyone well prepared before the time that all the cards are on the table. That's another 10% of the success of directing the rest of the shoot. Right, so once we're on set together, I don't want people to model for me modeling and when I say modeling I mean someone stands in front of the camera and they hit a pose and they hit another pose and a third and a fourth and a fifth and they've practiced these five poses because they think they know what looks good with them. I avoid that at all costs. An image should be built and the reason why an image should be built is because I've chosen a specific face for a specific reason. So I have a main light and I look into a main light. Now my face is completely different to if I'm over here. I'm telling a completely different story over here to what I'm telling over here. So that's why we don't model in shoots. We set ourselves, we find poses and shapes that enhance the image and that work with the lighting in the image and then we gently direct from there. So we'll be in a position, I'll work a lot with head structure on the shoulders. It tells a lot. The Queen Mum sits up here and James Bond sits somewhere down here. So every little angle and nuance of one or two degrees in any direction influences the final mood in your shot. So in terms of directing, I will always give someone a line of sight. Okay, so your eye line is the pole in the middle of the light. Don't move from there. Nose, eyes pointing there. From there, Look at me with your eyes and keep your head there. Look back. Give me two more degrees. It'll be subtle adjustments in directing the whole time. So hands, eyes and shape of the head on the shoulders. I'll be working really hard the whole time to direct everyone on set into the smoothest possible outcome for the lighting, the wardrobe, the concept, the characters that that all forms the final image.